Today I want to talk to you about mountains in your life. If you're like most people, you've got mountains in your life. They come from all kinds of places, from our past, uh, baggage, um, all kinds of things that pile up in our lives against us, accusations the enemy wants to bring against us, things from our past. But there's hope for us today. So I want to talk to us about mountains. First of all, in Mark chapter 11, verse 23, the word says, For assuredly, <clears throat> this is Jesus talking, For assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Mark eleven twenty three. You know, in the last several years, um, we've been involved in the Word of Faith message, which I totally believe in Word of Faith. But you know, um, me and my good old flesh can make the things of God work. I made faith a work where I was having to work my faith and did I have enough faith and I need to build my faith. And so what I see and what I'm coming to realize is how much that the present day church of the Lord Jesus Christ has put responsibility and pressure on the believer to think that they have to believe enough, that we have to do enough good things to earn the things that Jesus has already done for us the things that he freely gave to us. There's a scripture in, um, and I'm sorry, I don't know the reference right off, but it talks about that even when we are faithless, he is faithful. Isn't that wonderful that we can trust God, that he has more than enough faith? In fact, in Galatians, it tells us that I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God. So God has given each man the measure of faith, and I believe it's just enough faith to get to Him. And then when we come to Him, we can hook our faith into the Lord Jesus Christ, the faith of the Son of God. Because, you know, our faith is up and down, our faith is all around, but the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ it is a done thing. It stands and it is steady as a rock and straight. It's not in and uh, out, it's not up and down, but it is solid faith and, and we can believe in the works of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, we cannot trust our senses. Um, Saturday here, uh, we had a, a, a snowstorm. They were predicting it to snow all day said that we would have one to two inches and Saturday morning it, it snowed and snowed and snowed but nothing stuck. It was in the 60s here on Friday and so Saturday they're predicting one to two inches of snow. So then Saturday afternoon even it had stopped. I saw a little bit of blue sky come out and the sun was shining a little bit. Then the clouds came back in and um, just nothing was happening. I went into a store and in 15 minutes I came back to check out the parking lot was covered. When I walked out of the store, the whole front of me turns white with snow coming on me. I had to put my hands in front of me to be able to see because the snow was going in my eyes to even be able to find my car because now the snows, the cars were covered in snow. I'm driving. I'm, now listen to this. I'm driving in it. I'm looking at it. And you know the words that are coming out of my mouth? I can't believe this. I can't believe this. I can't believe. I can't believe what I'm seeing. I can't believe what I'm experiencing. And I still say, I can't believe it. So we can, there is no trust in our physical senses. So see, I can believe things that I don't see, things that I have no proof of, but I can have faith for, and I see them with my spiritual eye because the seeing and the experience doesn't make you a believer. You're either a believer or you're not. So we're talking about mountains. You know, um, recently I was thinking about some mountains and let me, let me talk about a mountain, a mountain of debt. Now I believe that our country even is suffering from a spirit of debt and poverty and lack, <clears throat> so that ties us up. But you know what? 
the power of the Lord Jesus Christ is greater. And so um, how else can you explain that when you're in debt and you want to get out, you just cannot get out? Because it's more than a financial matter. Poverty is a spiritual problem, not a financial problem. If it were a financial problem, it would have been cured years ago. They they throw millions and trillions of dollars at debt, but it never goes away because it's not a financial problem. So anyway, the other day I was thinking about um, debt that I have, that I, that I want to be gone, that I don't like. It wasn't that I planned to get in debt, but things happen. And then I've got, I'm pay, trying to pay off things and then other things happen before I can pay off the last things. And so now I have more debt. So I end up with a mountain of debt. I'm thinking about, but it's my fault. I'm the one that had the, um, you know, the brakes go out in the car, you got to get new brakes, or you need new tires, or you need a new transmission. And then you're not only taking care of yourself, you have children coming along, and then they get cars, and they have tires, and they have oil changes. And, you know, so it just, it just goes on and on. So I start to feel like, and the church has taken this attitude, you've made your bed, now lie in it. You know, this was my debt, I'm the one that created this debt, so I need to get rid of it. If we take that attitude, what do we need God for? I begin to see how we relegate God to certain things, but we don't want him involved in everything because I'm responsible for this. I can handle this. No, we can't. God wants us to rest in him. So the scripture comes to my mind in Zechariah 4, chapter 7. And it says, Who are you, O great mountain? Zerubbabel, you shall become a plain, and he shall bring forth the capstone with shouts of grace, grace to it. What is grace? Grace is undeserved favor. So you know what? I can speak to my mountain. And I can trust God for undeserved favor, that he would give me debt cancellation. He would give me promotions or raises or awards, contests, uh, inheritances, favor. Uh, He can give me harvest from past generations that didn't know that they were planting seed and can receive harvest from that. So I can believe that God can do things for me that could eradicate it. Look at the children of Israel when they were coming out of Egypt, how God gave them favor with the Egyptians and they went and asked and they were given garments and raiment and they were given gold and silver. And they left, the word says that there was not one feeble one among them. And the true rendering of that word feeble is actually pauper. There was not one pauper among them. Get your mind around that. We're talking over 3 million people We're talking about slaves who couldn't have been able to earn anything, who would have lived in uh, probably um, downside, you know, downgraded housing and, and bad areas and all this kind of stuff. So they wouldn't have had much. And yet the word says there was not one pauper among them. Did they deserve that? What did they do? Did they act right? Had they believed God? Had they done everything, crossed all their T's and dotted all their I's? I can boldly say, absolutely not. God is not looking for those people because the people that dot every I and cross every T aren't looking for God because they have considered that they've been able to do it and they've earned. Well, you know what? The word tells us that earning is not faith. That if I get something because I've earned it, it's a wage. It is not a gift. A gift is something that I have not earned, something that I haven't deserved, and yet that's what God wants to pour out on you and me. Things that we don't deserve. We can speak grace, grace. What if you in your past uh, maybe committed adultery? Maybe you were a, a thief, a murderer. And so you come to the Lord Jesus Christ, but you know what? You you have come to realize that you were a bad person. And so now you're going to live your life um, in penance because of how bad you were. Oh, my friend, you may have done all those things. 
You may have done none of them. But when the Lord Jesus Christ comes, the word tells us that he justifies the ungodly. Justification means it's just as if I never sinned. So when Jesus Christ comes and he washes away our sin, he's not covering it as like the blood of bulls and goats, but he is washing away our sin. He washes away all of our sin. Is it just the confessed sin? Well, let's talk about confessed sin. And a lot of people get confession and repentance mixed up. I can confess, 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 confess till I'm blue in the face. And that all that does is tell you what I've done. That doesn't mean I've repented. Repentance is a change of mind, a change of direction. My dad used to call the steering wheel on your car a repenter because, you know, if you're going the wrong direction, you just flip around and you turn and you go a different direction. It's a repenter. So you can confess all that you want, but that doesn't mean you've repented. Repenting is changing direction, changing your mind. But you know, the truth of that is only God can bring us to a place of repentance. Only God can change us. In Romans, it tells us, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. God is the one that renews my mind. As I'm listening, as I'm reading things, then I get, uh, God speaks to my heart and my spirit. He brings revelation about truths. And so therefore I can get new ideas and changing. Several years ago, I, I, uh, about two years ago, I had a prophetic word saying that, that there was a new working of grace in my life and that it was going to bubble up and it was even going to change the way I think. Well, two years from the time that that was prophesied to me, I can tell you that that absolutely is done. I, I'm amazed at the th way that I'm thinking differently because of the revelation that God is bringing to me. So we don't want to live in penance Oh, you know, I did that, so I, I, I need to pay for this. Well, if you are paying for it in any way, then you have not received the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because when the Lord Jesus Christ forgave you, when he washed your sin away, he washed it all away. He justified you. He is not holding anything against you. So if you've been walking around with a heavy burden that you're trying to pay penance for your previous life or you're, you're sorry and you're working three or four jobs to pay off this terrible debt that you've um, rung up or that was thrust upon you through a sickness, um, you know, something breaks down in your car, something breaks down on your house, something happens and so it's beyond your, your uh, capability or your resources at the time and so you're just struggling so hard to do it. God wants to be involved in your life. He wants you to be able to shout grace, grace to your mountain. Undeserved favor, undeserved favor. And God wants to meet you. He wants to give you and, 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 and do things for you. He's a wonderful God. He's a wonderful God. He's a wonderful God. I cannot say that enough. He's a wonderful God. Um, I've given the example that if I, um, I have a, a white tablecloth and let's say that I'm having a dinner or I'm having, uh, yeah, I'm having a dinner and we have grape juice. And so someone spills grape juice on my beautiful white tablecloth and that person feels horrible. They just feel horrible about it. But I go, don't worry about it. I have bleach. So I put, or I have a, a stain remover. So I treat the stain I put it in my washing machine and my dryer, and I bring it out. I shake out the tablecloth. There is absolutely no stain on it. But you know what? Every time my friend comes over, they can look at the table, sit in the same spot, and go, you know what? There was a stain there. And in their mind, they remember that stain. They remember how they felt when that stain went on that tablecloth. They were embarrassed. They felt awful. But I look at them, and I go, but there's no stain there. And so they're going around feeling bad for something that is no longer there. Are you living that way? Had, do you have things in your past that you, you, you did, you thought, yet the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ has cleansed you and, let, and yet you let the memory of that keep you captive? When Jesus came, and washed away your sin. He did exactly that. 
He washed it away. There is no trace of it. It's gone. So if you go to God and you say, well, God, remember, blah, 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 he will go, what are you talking about? Because when he looks at us, he sees us washed in the blood. He sees us through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. So he can't see the stains. He's not holding things against us. He has freely given us all things. What a wonderful God we serve. So I just want to encourage you today, don't let your past, don't let your mountains hold you captive. Speak grace, grace to your mountains, that those mountains may melt away, be cast into the sea, as Jesus said in Mark eleven twenty three, 23, so that your ground is like a plain and you're going forward with no bumps in the road. You look back and you don't see anything, but you see a well-watered plain behind you because it's been washed away. The mountains have been taken away. The blood of the Lord Jesus Christ has cleansed it and made it wonderful. Let me encourage you today, examine your life. And if there's any way that you're being apprehensive about God, if there's any memory or thing that you've committed in the past that still weighs heavy on your mind, you need to know that the Lord Jesus Christ has washed it away and made you clean. May God bless you. Speak to those mountains. Look to God and let him and receive from him his undeserved favor, his grace. Grace, grace to our mountains. Be gone and be cast into the sea. God bless you. Mm -hmm.